One of my favorite sayings is DWIT, which just basically means do whatever it takes. And I would say that all the time to myself, like after the girls were in bed, I was exhausted, but I kept thinking, do whatever it takes. Like we're not going to be in this bucket anymore. We're not going to be in this boat. Things are going to change. Welcome everyone to the Closing Table Podcast, real accounts from real estate professionals from across the country brought to you by Windowsdale. I'm your host, Kat Schooler, and today I am sitting down with broker and owner of the Brokaw Group, Bethany Brokaw. Bethany has been voted the best of Zillow, a top 15 agent in Michigan, and in 2023 and 2022, Realtor of the Year. Bethany shares with us her amazing story as being a single mom who becomes an accidental real estate agent to a broker owner success story. She shares how working with the Women's Council of Realtors skyrocketed her career and all of the juicy mindset and career advice she's learned along the way. And she shares some of her top tips for new agents. This is a must listen, whether you've been in real estate for a year or many years, Bethany has so much wisdom to share. I can't wait for you all to listen. So here we go. Bethany, thank you for joining me today. How you doing? Good. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you. So take us back to the beginning. How did you get started in real estate? Well, I'm definitely an accidental real estate professional. Um, I started out years and years ago, actually pre-law in college. Um, I had a nice surprise, which was a baby in my stomach. And so once I found out I was pregnant, I changed courses. I immediately changed my major to um, secondary education, high school Spanish teacher, because I wanted to get done with college sooner and have a career that had the same hours as my baby and had good health insurance. So it wasn't necessarily for love. It was just to be realistic and be a grown up. Um, From there, one of my friends from school, he had gotten his real estate license right out of high school at 18. And he had told me for years, if you ever want to come work for me, come work for me. And so I called him up and said, would you work around my schedule? Would you let me bring my baby to work? And would you let me leave and go to college too when I need to? And shockingly, he said yes. And so now my just turned 20 year old was actually potty trained in a real estate office in downtown Flint. Mm -hmm. I started out as an assistant to an assistant in real estate. I've done everything you could think of from ground up, from putting signs in to doing six open houses on a weekend, to calling for feedback on showings a hundred times, to taking photos. Because back in the day, there was no such thing as professional photography companies um, with the old school digital cameras that we would plug in. And I actually knew how to edit. So it was a big big deal. Uh, From being an assistant, I moved up to being his executive assistant and then an office manager. At that point, I was doing recruiting and training and things. I was in my senior year of college, and he said, you should really get your real estate license. And at this point now, I had added a second little girl, and my daughters are six and a half years apart because it takes me that long to date again. Mm -hmm. And um, I said, wait, I'm raising two children completely on my own 100%, like physically, financially, everything. There's no way I can work on commission. And my best friend said to me, you know, Beth, if you just sell one extra house this year, it's extra money for you and the girls. I said, okay, I guess you're right. I'll get my real estate license. So I got my real estate license, and I sold my first home I ever shown that first week, and I sold 47 homes my first year. I quit college my senior year, about six and a half months to maybe nine months after that, when I did a lot of calculations and realized, oh my goodness, I think I think I'm going to make more than my college professor, you know, oh, next yeah. year. And it was definitely God's plan, not my plan. He knew all the time that I was going to be into real estate. Um, All the pre-law and the contracts and everything helped me a lot Mm. when negotiations, paperwork, all the really important things. I'm all about get it in writing, get it in writing. Um, And then just from both my parents are business owners, small business owners of cosmetology schools and barbershops. So I have natural, what I believe, marketing ability in me. Anyhow, I grew up going to their establishments all the time. And, Mm -hmm. you know, when you own your own business, you wake up every day and you don't know who's going to pay you or how you're going to feed yourself. And you have to just keep going and keep going. So I already had that ingrained in me as well, which was nice. And I've always been a really hard worker. I'm not afraid. I mean, I've done anything you can think of, like clean toilets, focus groups. I would do anything to keep the roof over our head when my daughters were babies. And this was the first career ever that the amount of work I put into it, I actually got back. And so 
that was unheard of for me because at the time, I mean, I was I was coming out of poverty from being a poverty riddled single mother who I was a homeowner, but you know, it was tough. You'd pay your bills late every other month. So they wouldn't shut off the electricity or the water. You'd have a hundred dollars a month for groceries. I'd be cutting coupons. It was a very difficult life for me. And so being able to actually take myself out of poverty and provide for my girls everything I always wanted to without writing two pages of paragraphs to get them scholarships for all their activities was amazing. And then the the best part about it was I was shocked at how rewarding it was. I thought the whole time I was really good at what I did and I knew it. But I always thought, well, if I become a realtor and sell houses, I'm a salesperson. Mm-hmm. I'm not a salesperson. I can be, but that wasn't what I wanted to do. It's actually rewarding. I get to travel the world through my clients. I get to help people. So now I think of myself much more as a helper, client advocate. I get to fight for other people. I get to take care of them in their best interests. And that fills my bucket. Like knowing that I can take someone out of a bad predicament and make it better. Or sometimes people in life just need that little boost. I've had people that, I can't do it. I can't get these papers to the mortgage officer. I give up. You don't give up. I'm coming to your house and getting these papers. We're going to make you a homeowner. And I've gotten that opportunity, you know, to help people and change them in their lives or get them through some really tough transitions. You know, there's, um, we deal with a lot of death in real estate because sometimes you have to sell because someone you loved died. And to be able to know that I can help them and hold their hand and be patient with them, you know, or the elderly or divorce situations or family changes, not by people's own choices. And it's actually a privilege that I get to be there with them along their journey and hopefully give them at least that constant or that support. I like to tell my clients during transactions or when we're talking at the beginning during a buyer or listing consultation that I'd love to promise you everything's going to be seamless and perfect throughout. However, there's so many uncontrollable factors along the way that we can't control, you know, other parties, other agents, sellers and buyers. But no matter what, I'm going to be next to you holding your hand fighting for you. I really strongly believe in doing the right thing, not the easy thing. And so to me, you know, this, this is, I breathe, sleep, live and eat real estate. Now it's been 20 full years. My daughter turned 20 that I've been in real estate. Um, I'm now proud to say I'm a broker owner of my own company for over seven years. So that's pretty exciting. You know, things have definitely changed from when I started. Yeah. And you have such a a cool story in that way. And, and you're so involved in your, not just your own business, obviously, but the whole landscape of real estate. You are uh, the president of the Women's Council of Realtors, yeah. I'm a past president past for the president. Women's Council of Realtors, the state of Michigan. I'm also a past president for our local, which is called East Central. So um, Women's Council of Realtors was introduced to me in 2013. At the time I was an agent on a team, someone said, you got to go to a meeting. I went to the first meeting. All these people were hugging me. I thought it was a little weird, but I came back. Um, I'm so glad I did. It definitely changed the trajectory of my career, I believe, much faster and better Uh, We do a lot of education. And so I got very educated along the way. And I also was able to actually see some women business owners and business leaders. And in our particular area at the time, there was not really any, not a lot of, you know, high producing females or not a lot of women owned brokerages or anything like that. And so it, it was just nice as a female to be able to look and say, wow, I could do that one day. I could be like that. Um, the networking's amazing. It helps your clients with situations like multiple offers because now you know all of these agents that prior to, I didn't know them. And I, I grew up in a place where, why would you be friends with agents? Da, da, da. So it was a completely different mindset, but a better one because these are the people we are working with every day. Why wouldn't you want to make everything easier? Why wouldn't you want to be friends with them? And So that really helped as well. And then just being able to go to some of the national conferences and things like that, I was able to watch people like get on on stages in front of a thousand people and and do this and do that. And when you're able to actually witness those, those things, it lets you know, I could be that one day too. I could do that too. And so I truly believe Women's Council took me from being that buyer's agent on a team to now owning my own brokerage because I was able to witness it and see it. And the education's amazing. The education, the networking, the referrals. And now I'm really happy to say I'm a past state president. I'm the current state liaison, and I'm a national speaker and educator for the national. So I just got to speak in D.C. two weeks ago. I'm speaking in Chicago in August. Ohio is having me in September. Oh, wow. You know, I've spoken in California now three or four times. So I'm that person on the big stage. And I was the girl that was scared to get up and talk in front of every anybody. I was the girl that thought she wasn't good enough because – 
I came from nothing, you know, and all these things. And so Women's Council of Realtors really helped me know that I, it sounds silly, but that I was good enough. And sometimes people need to know that. Sometimes they just need that one person to say to them, you're amazing. You can be anything or that could be you one day. And mm -hmm. that's what Women's Council does. I had people that were way above my pay grade or rank at the time come up to me and say, that's you just so you know, or that's going to be you one day. And when someone else sees in you and you don't see in yourself, it can mean so much. And so now I get to do that to other, I get to go to other people and say, that's going to be you or you should run for state line. And it's just, it's really mind blowing. I just wish I could have told myself 15 years ago, you know, things are going to dramatically change for you one day because I didn't know that at the time um, but I'm personally I'm a huge fan of Women's Council of Realtors because of that and there's multiple other silly things and statistics I could say like we sell um, the members of Women's Council of Realtors outsell 80% of agents in the United States our average income is higher than 80% of agents you know there's multiple we own more seats and NAR committees than anyone else I think we own something like maybe even 60% or 30%, but yet we're only represented by less than 10% or so. So mm. we, you know what I mean? We're the movers and shakers and the leaders. And um, it's an amazing organization to be a part of. I recommend any realtor to be a part of it, especially anyone that's newer, because it can actually change your career. Um, I really believe in education and knowing your craft. And I wish there were much higher standards to get licensed in our state, but there's not. Um, and women's counsel will elevate, you know, your knowledge. And, and the more you know, the better you are for your clients, you know. Certainly. That's so inspiring. And so, you know, I know you said other people encouraging you really got you where you are today. But I think mm -hmm. there has to be kind of a moment of self-recognition on, on your end. So was there like a light bulb moment when you finally like realized all these things that they were saying? Were, was true and that you could you could be the speaker you could be an advocate for other real estate agents the light bulb probably would have been I think it was 2019 or 2020 it was the year that the COVID started mm -hmm. um, the national president at the time um, called me up and asked if I'd speak for their mid-year convention in DC and that was just what that was mind-blowing so that would have definitely been the the light bulb thing another thing that would have been a little wake-up call to me was when I looked in my bank account one day and realized I'm not poor anymore, or just mm. as silly as this sounds, when you come from such a poverty mindset, yeah. to be able to, and, and mind you, I wasn't as uh, intelligent with my finances then as I was now. I was very good at living budget consciously, but I paid my house payment a year in advance. And now that I, I know that's hilarious, I would have paid on principle. I would have, you know, I would have took the loan down. But when you're so poor, all you care about is knowing you can pay your bills. And so when I was able to do those things, it was like, oh my gosh, maybe I've made it, you know, maybe like we're going to be okay, you know, and all that has completely changed now. I mean, now I own multiple houses and I usually have two cars and things like that. So, I mean, my life is completely different than it ever was then. Uh, but it's more about getting to do something I love every day and I, the heart work more than the wall at work. You know, mm. like when I get to do good, it feeds my soul and my heart. And that's a lot of the things I like with the speaking. It's more so that I always joke if I don't make someone, if I don't make people laugh and cry during it, and there's at least five people lined up afterwards to talk to me, I didn't do a good job. And I better do something better because to have people afterwards come and say things like, I needed to hear this today. Thank you. That means everything in the world to me because I went a long time needing someone to tell me those things and no one did. And so if I can hopefully be that light in the darkness for people, no one, we all have different stories. We all mm -hmm. come from different places, different walks of life. Oftentimes you'll just see someone and we can't help it. We immediately th see things and think things. I would look at people and think, oh, well, they're lucky. They're married. They have dual income. They don't really have to work. Like they came for money. And, and that's a bad judgment for me to make. But people make those judgments and we all have stories. And now I could be judged that way. I got married a couple years ago. So people go, oh, she owns a brokerage and has these houses. And But it's like you don't understand. Like we all started from somewhere. And so it's important to me for people to – share their stories to know that it doesn't matter where you came from ever. It's where you're going to end up. Like, you know, whatever you're going through is temporary. It doesn't mean it's going to define you forever. Don't ever let your circumstances define you. And uh, I just really want to try to help people with that, whether it's from my clients to the public, to realtors, to my children, you know, to anybody, just that no matter what you're going through right now, it's not forever. 
you you know, and your life can dramatically change in a few years. I'm living proof of that. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't mean it's going to be like this forever. It's just when it's really hard for people, it feels like forever. Yeah. Uh, what What do you, when you're kind of going through a hard time, other than you know, knowing that it's temporary, kind of like what got you to this point that you can, you know, be here and say like, I know this is temporary. Like what got you this far? A couple different things. One would be faith. Like I just, I have very strong faith um, in Jesus. And it says in the Bible, do not fear 365 times once for every day of the year. And so every time I was scared or felt awful, I'd keep telling myself, don't be afraid, don't be afraid, don't be afraid. Um, And then secondarily, mindset. I've been a big reader since I was a kid. Um, Thank goodness my neighbors always had garage sales so I could buy Mm -hmm. books. My family was not readers, but I was. And I would devour things. And so reading books, and I've also always believed, hang around the smartest person in the room. Be with the best person in the room. Like hang around people above your, you know, station in life or whatnot. And I would always do that. I was not afraid to do that. Those things helped me because it helped my mindset. And so... I would play, I still to this day play the opposite game in my head. So the second, if I'm looking in the mirror and I think, uh, you know, it looks like you're getting some wrinkles over there. I'll immediately change it in my head to, you know what? Your face looks good and young for being 45 years old. You look great. And so no matter what it is, even whether it's silly cosmetic looks or I can't believe they're going to let me on stage. I'm going to get so nervous. I might throw up. I'm going to suck. Oh my gosh. I'll immediately change. I'm going to do an excellent job today. I'm going to speak. And you can use that for anything in your life. So if you're ever doubting yourself, to me, one of the easiest ways was if I immediately started saying something bad in my head, like you'll never be able to not be able to pay, you know, get out of poverty. This sucks. I would change it to one day I won't be in poverty. One day I'll have a home on a lake. You know, one day I'll have this. And one day, you know, I'll be able to make sure my girls will be taken care of and have careers. And I would change it around even if I didn't believe it because our minds are the most powerful muscle we have in our whole body and the most powerful tool. And the only difference between someone that's successful and not successful a lot of times is the mindset because you can have the hardest circumstances in the world. And we just dipped on mine lightly, which is good because I don't want to cry today. (laughs) But I have an extremely tragic story with like multiple tragedies throughout my lifetime that I do think a lot of people would hear and say, I would have gave up. Like, it's insane. But um, knowing that I was a mother also, it was one of those things that they didn't ask to be born into a single parent household. They will never suffer because of my choices. Mm -hmm. And so that would keep me going no matter what. And that would keep me working 12 hour days. You know, I'd put the babies to bed, I'd get on my computer and I'd build a business. Right. I just, I kept thinking like my girls will be taken care of. We will not always be in this boat. And so, and we're not, but it, but it's, it's, it's easy to explain it, but it's hard to do when you're in it. Oh, if I that makes sense. Imagine. You have to just force yourself to say it won't be like this forever. And don't get me wrong. I cried a bunch too. <laughs> <I> was, <laughs> yeah. Cried myself to sleep, woke up and cried. I, I mean, I always say I had a decade of what I call my dark period where life was really hard and, but I just never gave up. And um, I believe I've been rewarded beyond belief now for never giving up. And I really believe in helping other people. And the more I've been blessed, I definitely want to bless others and do. It's important to me. I think that's really beautiful. You know, and I think you're right. It is easy to say, well, that sounded easy. You know, you you Mm -hmm. tell your story. You're like, well, I was a single mom. Like I had to. And mm-hmm. you, you sit there and you think, of course, of course you would do whatever you needed to do for your family. You would right. you would move mountains, you know, um, but easier said than done. No, I mean, it really is. One of my favorite sayings is DWIT, which just basically means do whatever it takes. And I would say that all the time to myself, like after the girls were in bed, I was exhausted, but I kept thinking, do whatever it takes. Like we're not going to be in this bucket anymore. We're not going to be in this boat. Things are going to change. And I look back now and I can't believe I was going to college and working and raising the girls. I was on the president's list at U of M. I didn't even know president's list existed. I only heard a dean's list. President's list means you're a straight four point. And I was putting myself through college and doing, I'm tired just thinking about it. But (laughs) it's because I kept thinking, do whatever it takes. Like I'm going to get out of this. I'm not going to have excuses. Um, I definitely believe I'm, I lack empathy sometimes for people when they have excuses about things. But that's mm-hmm. just because of where I came from that I didn't make those excuses. It didn't matter how tired I was. It didn't matter how poor I was. I was going to still work and try and, you know, do everything I could. Um, and I am working on having more empathy for people that make excuses. But I know that's one of my weaknesses because I feel that 
anyone in the world is capable of anything if they want to do it. But they have to put in the hard work and they have to believe in their self. It's both. And some people will believe in their self but not put in the hard work. And other people will work hard but they are doubting themselves all the time. And you have to be able to do both. And having so many different tragedies and not necessarily the easiest life, you know, growing up or during my 20s or things like that, I think only helped me because I'm so fearless now because I think, what's the worst that could happen? This. What's the worst that could happen? This. I still have a roof over my head. I can pay my bills. My daughters are wonderful. You know, they're so much better than I ever was at their age. I mean, they both volunteer on purpose because they want to, not for hours. They both, they're just both such, they make me proud every day. They make me much more proud of anything I've accomplished in real estate because I look at them and I say, wow, I really did something right because they're just so wise and kind behind their years and they have the best hearts ever. And I look at them and I'm like, I really did do something right. Oh, you know, that's so just, beautiful. They're really, truly good gals. If you met them, you'd feel the same way. My 20-year-old acts like she's 60. <laughs> she's got a wise <laughs> old soul. She does, a very wise old soul. Wow, we're really getting to the good part. And I can't wait for you to hear what comes next. But first, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to make sure you are following and subscribe to the Closing Table podcast wherever it is you get your podcasts. Also, please leave us a comment or review. It is the best no-cost thing you can do for the podcast, and it helps us grow and find more awesome listeners like you. Now back to the episode. So when you are going and, and speaking at these different events, are you telling your story? It's like what are, what are kind of like the themes and, and messages you're, you're kind of sending out there? The majority of it right now is more real estate related and real estate training. So one of the last things I spoke at was on the new NAR settlement. Mm. That was a panel. Um, a few weeks ago in D.C. I spoke on organic referrals, which is basically a fancy way of saying free ways to earn more business. Um, I do try to put a couple snippets throughout everything, if possible, of a little bit of my journey or story to talk to people uh, more to ground level. It's very important to me not to be that person on the stage that ever talks above people, if that makes sense. If you've mm -hmm. heard speakers, you'll sometimes get a different kind of vibe. I want to be right there with them. Um, I've once told my story once at a women's council event in, um, where were we at? Grand Rapids a few years ago, but otherwise you'll just get a snippet or two. But I like to tell people things like, Hey, all of you in the audience right now, some of you are brand new agents. Some of you are broker owners. Some of you are team leaders. Some of you are making six figures and then some, some of you aren't. It doesn't matter where you're at in life right now. Do not compare yourself to others. Comparison is the thief of joy. This is your journey. I'm here to help you on it. Do not look at me and compare yourself to me because guess what? I was not always the broker owner like with the mm -hmm. houses. I was not the person on stage. And so I, it's important to me to try to tell them those things up front so whatever walk of life they're in, they know I can still be whoever I want to be. Like it's not too late. It's not too late. It's not too late for anyone. I mean, I still want to write best-selling books, and I believe I'm gonna. Like, oh yeah, I want to write books. Like, that's my ultimate goal. So, it, but I, even though I'm 45, I don't think it can't happen. Mm -hmm. You know, I believe it can, and everyone should never give up on whatever's in their heart. You know, if if, if there's something laid on your heart that feels like I need to do this, that's there for a reason. You know, and they and they should do it. And I just. You know, society teaches us to go to school, go to college, get on the hamster wheel of life, buy your house, pay your student loans, work a ton. Maybe if you're lucky, retire when you're 67. The average age of Americans right now is 75 years old. Maybe eight years of retirement if you're lucky, if you're healthy enough to even move around for it. Mm -hmm. And I just think that everyone should be able to have real true dreams and goals and hopes of whatever they want. You know, smash the hamster wheel. See you later, society. Like, I want to be on a beach in five years in Costa Rica. <laughs> and Ooh. it's uh, And I really believe I'll, I'll do it. Um, but we have to, us, all of us have to change our mindset to say, just because this is what everybody else is doing, I oftentimes tell my children, you have to live a life unlike everyone else to live a life unlike everyone else. And I would have to tell myself that all the time when all my friends were out partying when I was 25 and 26 and spending money and having fun and I'm at home with a baby just being responsible and working and working. And I kept telling myself, small sacrifices will equal big rewards. Small sacrifices will equal big rewards. And they really did. But you have to tell yourself if you want that life unlike everyone else, you can't do what everyone else is doing. You just, you have to. And it's it's tough. It is tough. It's tough for me even now. I have friends all the time that want to hang out or do things or this or that. And I love my friends. It's not that I haven't given up my friendships. But I have to sometimes say, no, I can't because I have this. 
like, but I can do this or this on these days. And, uh, but I truly believe, you know, you got to really weigh what's more important to you at the time and what you want to do or not do. And I think that I believe anyone can get there with whatever it is they want to do, regardless of their income level or even education level. I feel like thanks to us living in the United States of America, I feel like we have that right to improve ourselves no matter where we come from, which is awesome. Yeah, for sure. So I'm sure in the beginning, right, we talked that you were grinding like yes. in the business hard. Do you feel like you've been able to like kind of take your foot off the gas a little? Is it just really different now that you're a broker owner? Like what's that transition been like? Um, it's been a little bit of both. So I still do have to alternate grinding sometimes. Um, when I got back from DC, first two weeks I was back, I literally worked 12 to 14 hour days every day, Monday through Friday, the first two weeks. And, uh, I said to my husband, oh my gosh, I'm 45 now. Like this is a little tougher than when I was in my thirties, you know, working this many 12s or 14s. But my, blessing and curse with that is I truly believe in doing what's best for the client at all times. And what's best for my client is hitting deadlines, making sure they're in that house at the right time, presenting the offers in a timely manner, not losing out on good offers, doing this and that. And real estate doesn't sleep. Real estate's not nine to five Monday through Friday. It So when I'm on deadlines or things are important, I just can't be okay being less than average. I can't be okay just be going to bed knowing that house could be gone tomorrow because I'm too tired to write an offer on it. Mm. And so no matter where I'm at in life, even if it's five years from now when I'm in Costa Rica, if my client wants a house, it could be midnight and I'm writing that offer. Because again, I just, I can't not. I must take care of them the best way that I can. Um, and that's a personal thing that is a blessing and a curse because it's a curse in the sense that I don't have much of a I've just recently started to have a slight life again um, <laughs> since prior to having my daughter, but it's a blessing that I, I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. I must do the right thing. Um, on the other hand, though, now I have four amazing administrative professionals. So I have an operations manager who was actually someone I started with 20 some years ago. So I'm very thrilled to have her and she's licensed and absolutely amazing. So that's already started to help me breathe a little. Um, and then my daughter, who's 20, also is my executive assistant. Oh, nice. And then I have um, two other administrative assistants. So having four people besides our amazing team of realtors as well does help me. That's why I'm here with you right now, mm -hmm. honestly. They're running the four down. They're checking my emails. They're taking care of business. They're scheduling my appointments. I'm able to go away more, which is nice. Um, I could go away. Next week, I'll be in Mackinac Island for our state women's council meeting. And then uh, I'll be in Chicago, I'll be in Boston in November, and the Azores in Europe. And the reason I can leave half the month, though, sometimes is because of my amazing staff. So in answer to your question, I do still grind, but I'm I'm able to escape. Like, um, I'm able to go places. And uh, we have a house in Florida, and I'm able to go there for a month to six weeks every December and January now. Like a true so, Michigander. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I I'm, I'm, can be a little bit of a snowbird, and I can swim every day. And I don't get me wrong, I still work. I got seven pendings there this January, which was hilarious. Um, so I'll still do work, but I'm able, I can breathe. And before I could never breathe. And so I'm okay if I am doing the 12 or 14 hour days because I'll know that, well, in a month I'll ha I'll be gone for these three days, mm -hmm. you know, or things like that, that I can get some breathing time in. Um, and I'm okay with it because I, I know I don't want to do 12 or 14 hour days forever. Like I know that my big goal is by the time I'm 50, I, I really won't be doing 12 or 14 hour days anymore. You know, at that point, my wonderful clients will get taken care of by my wonderful, you know, realtors on staff and the team and things like that. I'll still take care of my clients when I'm home. But, you know, my goal is that they're going to be taken care of just as well as if I was there as well. But that's when I want to write the book. So, yeah, I can't sell too many houses if I'm writing books. <laughs> I think that's wonderful. It's such a clear vision, you know, on a beach, yeah. writing your book. And and I think that is what makes you the drive to achieve it probably so much easier. It seems like you've always had a very clear vision of, of where you wanted to be and what you wanted to achieve. Would you agree? Somewhat. Like, that's a great thing you said. It's funny. My husband just said something like that to me two days ago, something along the lines of, you just always know exactly. But it wasn't always like that. You know, originally in school, I wanted to be a criminal defense attorney or a lobbyist. I did want to write books too when I was young. Um, but, you know, real estate wasn't what I thought would ever be my career path. That was definitely accidental. Um, 
but but what you're saying though, I've always dreamed my whole life of living by a beach where I could walk to the beach, where you could walk within five minutes to the ocean and smell that salt water and be by the mermaids and all that fun stuff. And uh, you know, being able to right now live on the lake that I go went to as a child, that was the campground we went to. Like that was my dream to live on that lake. And I got to accomplish that dream. It was my dream to have a house in Florida by the time I was 60 to be a snowbird. And I got to accomplish that dream three years ago. Those things are why I believe I can be on the beach at Costa Rica, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. That's why I have these big, wild, crazy dreams because we all should. And what's the worst that could happen if you don't accomplish your big, crazy dream? You still came close, though. And you came a lot closer than you would have if you set your goals smaller. Um, So I I do think I'm a naturally – I'm type A in the sense that I'm very much into goal setting and planning. I have spreadsheets for days about everything. They always say if you don't write it down – you have like an 80% chance of accomplishing it if you write it down. Mm-hmm. And so I'm into writing things down all the time and this and that and executing. And um, it's actually kind of fun to me. Like relaxation to me is studying maps of areas and knowing where to go when I'm on trips or vacation planning is relaxing. Um, I just think I'm very ingrained to be a productive person due to when the kids were smaller that there was no time to not be right and I'm okay having what I call recharge time now which means I can get a facial or a massage or something but it took me quite a while to even be okay with that I did yeah you know and and because it's it's hard to change your your path right when you Mm -hmm. went from scarcity yes to to abundance I'm I mean I'm so glad that you're at this point where you can enjoy your abundance right because some people don't don't make that transition um but i i think it's really wonderful that you you do have all these plans and you do all these things because then i'm sure your your children see it too yeah yeah no i i think they do too and you know my um my 20 year old right now she's in the process of opening up a residential assisted living home so we went to training and we're gonna be able to help older people have a beautiful safe place that's clean and does not smell that we would put our own family in that they can feel good about with amazing caregivers and a chef and farm to table and um so her and i have just went through that training so she should actually be a business owner by the time she's 21 at the latest and um and that's exciting and she's putting in the hard work after hours and all the things and she has told me before you know mom you're the hardest worker I've ever saw and you know thank you for helping me be able to have a career in a future where I'll never have to work as hard as you she'll still work hard but she won't have to be getting four hours of sleep like living exhausted for you know six or seven years or anything and and so you're right I think I think that's been good for them and I think that some people, it's just natural. It sounds funny, but to me, it's just, I'm a very forward moving and thinking person. If I'm not moving forward, I guess I feel like I'm not doing my purpose or what I should be doing. And I'd probably feel bad about myself. Honestly, I'd probably wake up in the morning and not be okay with myself if I said, well, I'm okay. I'm selling houses, making money. Life's good. Who cares? If I wasn't still moving forward in some direction, I just don't think I'd be okay. I just think it's who I am, I guess. Yeah, if that, it's drive, right? Yeah, it 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 is, and it's a uh, it's a blessing and a curse, like I said. And yeah, my fa- right now I'm on an extreme health kick, so my family mm. is not a big fan of that because we've <laughs> taken all the dyes out of the house. Oh, we get um all our meat are, is from local farmers. We get half a cow and half a pig, and our chickens from organic places. We even get raw milk, and so I'm very much down the rabbit hole of you know no toxins no poisonous eating and they don't really love that though so my family's not always supportive it just depends what I'm going <laughs> for. They, uh, I did let them have cupcakes this weekend though and, oh, pie right and stuff so I mean yeah. I'm not not awful and I tell them you know I saw a pop in the house the other day and I said look I need you to get the cleaning solution off the cabinet and hide it from me because I'll end up using it for cleaning solution and they hit it so I don't make them throw it away but I don't know. I, I think they'd give you half reactions on my drive. They like part of it, and the other part, they're like, why won't mom ever quit? <laughs> so that's okay, though. I think it's great. I think it what, what keeps you, like, learning it, what keeps – it's what keeps you going. It, it's what keeps us alive. Yes, You know, yes. kind of speaking, you, you mentioned, you know, <laughs> you retire at 67, and then you really don't – you know, if you live the average, don't have that much time left. But, hey. you know, the, the more and more I've, – I've been on a science kick – so I listen Love to all it. these science podcasts. Right. But um, there is a lot of like our willingness to learn new things and mm-hmm. willingness to do hard things is related to our willingness to be alive. Yes. Yeah. 
I love that you said that because I tell people all the time, we can do hard things. And you have to do things that scare you in order to grow. You have to. I'm scared all the time. I mean, I'll, I'll get a little scared before I go on stage sometimes. Or if it's the night before, I'm thinking, why did I do this to myself? I could have just sat in the audience and instead. Mm -hmm. But when you do those hard things and those scary things, all it does is help you grow. Like it just, it, you know, it moves you forward and in abundance and all these great things. So I'm okay doing hard things and being scared all the time. And again, a lot of it is I can think back to my past when I was in much more scary situations mm -hmm. that I, and I tell myself all the time, what's the worst that could happen? And when you think of that, a lot of times the answer is so easy that then you're not afraid anymore. Um, like when we purchased the Florida house in 2022, we bought it sight unseen, full appraisal guarantee, way more over asking, no home inspection mm -hmm. from Michigan. But like I said to myself, what's the worst that could happen? We'll just sell it. And so I was okay doing it. And so I encourage people that are afraid to say to themselves, what's the worst that could happen? Because sometimes the worst thing that could happen is not even that bad. Right. And then you'll do it. You know, I was really scared when I started my own team a long time ago. And someone said to me, Beth, what's the worst that could happen? You could go work at any office in the county if you didn't want to have a team anymore. I'm like, oh, yeah, why am I scared? You know, mm -hmm. like, that's, that's not that scary. You know, or even with my brokerage. If I got sick of being a broker, having a brokerage, what's the worst that could happen? I could still go work somewhere else. It's not going to be the end of the world. And sometimes just telling yourself it's going to be okay can make it where you can do the scary things. So I love that. Um, do you have any, like, favorite client stories that you'd like to share with us? All kinds of different ones. Um I had a client once, her husband worked in the oil field, so she was pretty much um, similar-ish to a single mom because he would be gone for two months at a time, mm -hmm. far away, and they had six children, and no one in her entire family had ever been homeowners of every generation. Oh, wow. They all had lived in apartments or trailer parks, and um, we got them approved for a mortgage and everything, found a house, and she was really struggling trying to get the documents and taking care of all the kids, and her husband's gone and this and that. And I would drive to her house and get the papers and take them to the mortgage lady, and I would tell her all the time on the phone because she'd call me crying sometimes, like, it's just too hard, Beth. I can't do these papers. Like, you know, he's gone. It's just too hard. I'm giving up. And I'm like, you're not giving up. And the day we got to the closing table on that one, it was just tear fast. She was the first person in multiple generations of her family, all of the generations of her family from the United States, to own a home. And so that was a really big deal. And to be able to be a part of that was really, really, really special to me. Um, and I have another client. She's passed, which still makes me so sad. But she... Um, wonderful, sweet, wonderful lady. We became very close. We text and call, you know, a lot of times just even throughout being done with the transaction we still would and she had given me a lot of books we both read a lot of the same authors so she'd given me a lot of boxes of her books which I'm still reading and finishing and um she was the sweetest thing ever and her story is pretty unique in the sense that uh she was my client's mother and that's how I met her and he had told her you have to call Beth you have to call Beth the um, drain commission the local county drain commission came to her house knocked on the door and said here you have to sign this easement now thankfully she mm -hmm. just called her son and didn't do it her son said call me so I looked at it and I explained to her this means that they can go this close to your front door they're going to tear up your yard to do a drain thing and this and that she said I don't want to live here anymore if they're going to do this like I don't I said okay so I talked to them. They all of a sudden went from sign this to we'll give you $10,000 for it. She still didn't want it. I got them to 20. They still didn't want it. I was able to get them to buy her house cash, 25% over appraisal value. I got her six months to stay in the house for free to move out. And I got them to pay all of her closing costs that normally a seller would pay, like transfer taxes, title insurance, and realtor commission. Um, so therefore, she was able to find the right house that she wanted, move there in her own time, take all the stress away. And she was so glad because then they did tear up that yard completely, you know, and then they ended up selling it. Uh, but it was a really neat story in the sense that she thought she's just screwed. It's the government. They're going to make me do this. And I was able to protect her, you know, from them and also make the situation way better for her. And we became friends. And, um, you know, since then, as I said, she passed last year, which was very sad. But every time I pick up one of her books still, because she has her name and it, it's just, it's like a little bit in my heart. Like, you know, there's Linda right there. So because she was just one of the sweetest ladies ever. And it, it made me feel good to be able to protect her. I really like being able to 
protect my clients and Mm -hmm. be that strong person for them when they can't be because that's okay god puts people in everyone's life at certain times and um chapters in their life or things and sometimes you can't be the strong one and that's okay because i'm going to be the strong one for you like you come lean on me i will fight the fight for you and you don't need to worry about anything else like that's my job and so i i love being able to take care of people like that and i've been able to travel the world through my clients i've been able to help um, I really have a heart for the elderly. I'm more than happy to talk at a very lar- loud decibel and slow down <laughs> my speaking when I'm with them because they understand better. And my grandparents were the most influential people to me, me in my life. And so I have no problem holding hands or being patient you know, with older people. That's completely fine to me. Not everyone feels that way. But to me, it's a privilege. I feel like in the United States, we should honor our older people better like they do in other countries we just unfortunately don't have a culture that's built that way and so to get to help them I've helped a lot of people with their downsizes and that's a very emotional thing Um, they've custom built their home they've raised their children there you know that are now adults you know and have grandkids and that's very difficult to leave that and so I that gives me I don't want to say joy but it brings me contentment to know that at least I can be there to help them throughout the process and hold their hand and tell them things like, we are going to lose some house, we're going to lose some land, but we're going to get more time back because we're going to have less things and Mm -hmm. help them think about it in different ways to help them cope with it. And also explain to them that if you're feeling very nervous or stressed out right now, that's okay. That's normal. The largest financial transaction of your life is usually buying or selling. So if you're nervous and feeling crazy about it, guess what? that's okay. Sometimes people just need to hear that because they can be so nervous about things. And, you know, anything I can do to basically hold their hand is what I want to do and fight for them and help them. Um, but I mean, I, there's so many of my clients, I mean, my heart bleeds for single parents cause I was one. So I've, I've helped a lot of single moms. I have a couple I'm working with right now too, as well. I feel like I always have a constant roster of single mothers. And so getting to help any of them always, always, just you know makes me so happy and I I'm always so proud of them and I try to tell them that like I'm proud of you because here they are working and taking care mm-hmm. of their kids and doing it all by themselves with a smile on their face and some of them are the most amazing moms ever and I just you know I'm just I'm just so proud of them I am that you know I, tr- I try to tell that to them like you're doing amazing if no one's told you lately you are doing amazing and when I remember and when I can I'll, I like to I'll randomly text my clients things too like just want you to have a beautiful day today just thinking about you and and that's really truly from the heart it's not um like some people would say that's a good way to keep a client for return on investment and referrals and blah blah that's because I, I love them like they become like my family I know most of their families I mean Usually by the end of a listing appointment, we're given hugs. We're not given handshakes anymore. It's pretty rare we're given handshakes. Or if we can, it's just the male. <laughs> the female right, and I are yeah. still hugging. And I've had a lot say to me, is okay if I give you a hug first? And, you know, we've had lots of tears at appointments and things too because some of this can be very emotional. Or sometimes you're selling a home that someone you love had passed away and you had that home with them. And, you know, or sometimes you're completely relocating. And I feel that more realtors need to actually be trained in psychological um, empathy training of some sort to understand their, because some of their needs are not just the real estate. Mm -hmm. Some of their needs are other things too. And I don't know if everyone really understands that, but I've read a lot of different books on, you know, psychology and things so that I can truly be there for them in the right manner because every client's different. My engineers just want me to give it to them straight to the point, type A, this and that. I have other clients that I know that I'm going to talk about something, but I'm going to massage it in a certain way because that's going to be easier on them. And so it's my job and goal to always do what's best for that client and try to be extremely customized to that client so they can have the best experience possible for one of the hardest things of their life. Speaking of books, has there been any one or maybe two in particular that that have been the most influential to you in helping maybe with that kind of emotional aspect or even just with maybe the business aspect of your career? That's a tough one because I, I read quite a lot. I'm not going to lie, though. I read at least three what I call fun books for every one um, book that's either good for myself or the business. I do. Um and some of the, the things even came from, uh, like, one of my favorite books I actually read a long time ago is The Godfather, as funny as it sounds. I've read it five times. 
but that book will teach you about perseverance and networking and mm-hmm. it, sometimes it's about who you know not what you know so as silly as it sounds you can even take a fun book and take lessons out of there um i like atomic habits a lot oh, yes. um you know and that's just one of many um the one thing by gary keller is a good one for keeping focused because a lot of times i'll have 50 things on my to-do list and then I'll be trying to do 40 things on the doing column and I need to make myself just have two things in the doing column at once to actually get it completed and finished. And so the one thing has helped a lot with that. Um, trying to think what else. I've, I've read, uh, I think it's called the, I think it's called the Happiness something. I forget the name of it. It's an orange book. Yes, I know. The happy to study about. the one where everyone thinks that until I hit this point, I won't be happy, but mm-hmm. it's actually a mindset and you can be happy even if you're not at that point. And that book helped me a lot because I read that book when I was in poverty. Mm-hmm. And that book made me think, oh, I don't have to lose 50 pounds. I don't have to make six figures to ha- be happy. I can be happy right now. What? Because so many of us think that unless we're our optimal, perfect person at the time, we can't love ourselves or we can't be okay with ourselves. And that's not the case. And I think I was probably 35 when I finally realized I don't care what anyone thinks anymore. And I like myself, whether I weigh what I do now or I weigh 100 pounds more or 100 pounds less. And I'm finally at peace with who I am, that I'm okay with whatever journey I'm in. I'm okay whether I'm at the beginning of my journey or the end or the middle of whatever part of me I'm working on or what I'm doing. I'm okay with me. And when people are able to be okay with themselves and say, I'm okay with myself, that to me is life changing. And I wish more people could be okay with themselves because not everyone is. I certainly wasn't myself. Um, But it really changes your mindset when you realize, and I don't mean it in a rude way that you don't have to care what other people think, but just because of social media and all the technology these days, they force it down our throats. And I purposely call it fake book, you know, because (laughs) it is fake book. You're going to tend to only see the best of the best of every person's life. Or you're going to occasionally see all the drama that we all go, oh my gosh, look at that. You know, can you believe they posted that? But it's not healthy because all you're doing is comparing yourself to others. And it doesn't matter who you are in the world or where you're at. You're always going to find someone that you think has a better than you in some way. I'll never forget the night when I literally got mad at my husband while he was sleeping in bed, I'm on Facebook scrolling, which is not healthy, and I don't try to do that anymore ever. And I'm scrolling, and he's sleeping. And all I see is, oh, look, my husband just brought me flowers today for this. Oh, look, my husband just took me on this romantic date for no reason. Oh, look, this, and I keep seeing it, I keep seeing it. But I went to bed, I'm like, oh, he's in so much trouble with me. He literally did nothing wrong. Right. But it was such a bad influence. And when I told him about it the next day, we were laughing about it. But... That's when I said to myself, okay, we're getting a grip. Like, we're done. You know, I'm, I'm on there because I need to be and have to be for my business. It's very important. But I encourage everyone to think about limiting their time or only using it for the power of good, not bad, and trying not to just sit there and scroll. There's so many better things we can do in our life. But I think that that really robs people of being okay with who they are at the time. Um, you know, there's all these filters and fake things and this and that. And I wish I knew how to use the filters. I think my, 13, <laughs> I think my 13 year old does. Um, I knew how for like one minute on Snapchat, but I got rid of that. But, um, I just, it's important when people learn that it's okay to love themselves, even if they're not where they want to be, life can change just by being okay with yourself. It totally. really can. What would be your number one piece of advice for someone starting out brand new in real estate? Number one for sure is never give up, meaning you need to just keep going and keep going and keep going. A lot of times I'll send my agents the cute little gif of Dory, like the keep swimming, Mm -hmm. like keep swimming. Because real estate is not easy. It's not for the faint of heart. You have to have thick skin. You have to roll with the punches. A lot of hard things happen. I could tell a million sweet stories and wonderful stories, but I could tell you just as many really sad, awful stories or times that... I've been used and abused and worked for not just free, but negative money multiple times throughout my career. So you have to go into it being very tough and with the mindset you're not going to give up. Secondly, get educated. What you are learning in your licensing class to take your test and get your license is not even close to what you're going to do in real estate. They're completely unrelated. You don't learn anything in the licensing class about pricing homes, marketing, contracts, nothing. And so you need to ensure that you're working somewhere in which you're going to actually get a very hands-on education. Because no matter how hard you don't give up, 
if you're not educated properly, you're not going to know what you're doing. And you're playing with people's largest financial transaction of their life, their money. Mm -hmm. I don't like that there's dabblers. I don't like that people play with that. You wouldn't go to a heart surgeon that dabbles on the weekends and does four heart surgeries a year. You'd want to go to the professional that does 100 successful heart surgeries a year. And it's the same thing. You know, take it seriously. Take your craft seriously. Get educated. Be fussy about who you work for or with. And don't give up. You must have thick skin. If I hate to say it, but if you know that you're the type that can be very highly emotional and cry if there's bad days, it might not be the best thing for you. You might be crying every day. <laughs> and you have to be prepared. Be financially prepared. I had oh, over right. a year's worth of bills saved up first. Have money saved. Because if you have money saved, you're not going to worry about paying your bills, which means you can do the right thing for the client because you don't get paid unless there's a closing. And a new a closing could take a new agent 90 to 120 days on average to potentially have a closing. And that's if they're working all the time. If you don't have the money saved, you're going to go into it with the wrong mindset thinking about your commission check instead of the best interest of your clients. So it's really, really important to have money saved and make sure you're in a financial situation in which you're going to be okay for six months no matter what. In order to succeed, it's a lot more difficult when you're thinking already 30 days in, I got to make some money, I got to make some money compared mm -hmm. to I want to take good care of this client, I want to learn this, I wanted this and that. Um, because there's just there's just so much to learn, so much between programs, and also realize that if you really really want to make income, a lot of people go into real estate because they know some people that have multiple houses, do all these great things. I want to be like them. I I, I want to have this great career and not have to go to college and be a doctor or attorney. They need to realize that is one percent. One percent of realtors in the nation are making that income. I'm proud to say I'm a part of that one percent, but that means one percent. And the reason for that is we're all self-employed. And how many people, if they don't have showings or listings to go to, are going to truly put 40 hours a week into their business? Or how many are going to be at home or out on the lake or at these free mixers because they will feed us alcohol all day for free as realtors <laughs> um, or this or that. And then they'll, you know, say, well, gosh, why am I not selling any houses? And I always say, well, how many hours did you actually put into your real estate last week? You know, like three, maybe, maybe six. You're making an income like three to six. Mm -hmm. There's, there's no substitute for hard work. You have to put the work in to be able to have it come back to you. So if I, even if I don't have an appointment, which is exciting and rare these days, I'm in the office. I'm working. Like tonight, my husband said to me after this, are you going to have to go to the office? I said, nope, I can do all my work at home. So he already knows I'm still going to be working until 8 or 9 tonight. But that's why I'm part of there. So just they need to know that going in, that just because you're new and you're ready to go and you're scrappy, it doesn't mean you're going to immediately make this income. You have to be willing to do whatever it takes. You have to be willing to sacrifice certain things to win at others. I've had to sacrifice certain time with my children to be able to take us out of poverty. Now I'm able to say, I can see my children and I won't take the listing appointment, but it wasn't always like that. Mm -hmm. And balance is different for everyone. People should pick their own balance. There's no such thing as true life balance. Sometimes you got to give a little more here. You got to give a little more here. It just depends where you're at at that part of your journey. But um, thick skin, don't give up, get educated and have some money saved and be semi-realistic with your expectations. Like just don't go in thinking, I'm going to be making a million dollars a year in a year because it sure doesn't happen with right. that. It's not, it's not the way it is. I Those are some great points. It's so funny because I feel like balance has really become like the buzzword of the last, I don't know, two-ish, maybe more years. And I was, I was talking to somebody recently, or maybe I heard it online, so it could be a parasocial relationship, yeah. but somebody substituted in flow. They think mm -hmm. like balance is out, like let's talk about flow. And I think that's kind of more of probably closer to right. to something that's realistic. Yeah, I like that flow. Yeah. Like sometimes the work flow is taking over a little more and sometimes the children flow, sometimes the vacation flow. Yeah. You just got to adjust your flow. It's going to be our, the new buzzword. 2025 is all about flow. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of going forward, we are about halfway through the year now. Um, but you, you write everything down. You are driven. You have vision. Uh, do you have any goals for the the latter half of 2024 or for the next coming up 12 months that you'd like to share with us? Yeah, and my, um, my goals are to increase our office agent count by approximately two to four people. Um, we're very culture-orientated, so it's important to us that we have 
people that fit our culture right and that want to do the right thing, not the easy thing. So it's harder said than done. Uh, but we'd like to gain a few more agents. Uh, we'd also like to have everything set well in advance for all this fun NAR settlement things going on, which we're already working ahead of that. Um, I'd like to have my speaker website completed, which we're working on because I'm cl very close to the point of becoming a paid speaker. Uh, which is very exciting it and a is. pipe dream in itself. So I I do 100% believe within 12 months I'll have true paid speaking gigs. So I'm very, very excited about that. Um, I'd like to take a personal vacation next year. I am taking one this year, which is exciting. All the rest are work-related. Um, but I'd like to take a few more personal ones next year would be a big goal. And really just continue to improve all of our um, services, our systems, our client appreciation, you know, everything and anything at the office. I'm very, I'm constantly like, let's do this better. Let's do this better. Let's do, it never ends. My poor staff. I mean, <laughs> I warn them when I interview them though, that this is just how I am. I, we always want to improve things and make it better. And I want to continue that so that we are able to give our clients hopefully the best possible service. And we really believe in being full service. I mean, we're the type that if someone, oh my gosh, this broke, we have people to send over for it. If someone, I need this, we have a cleaner. I need this, we have this. You know, so we believe in taking the stress off as much as we can. And also being educated. A lot of times people will come to me and say, well, I spoke to two agents and so I know I can only do this. And I'm able to say, well, actually you have three options. You could do this, this, or this. And, um, you know, that's because of education. And so my goal is to keep getting I truly believe that every one of our realtors, because I educate them nonstop and force them to, are very highly educated. I will often, we joke at the office that the administrative team is knows more than 85% of realtors out there. And it's not to discount other realtors. It's because not every place gives you education. Not every place teaches you all these things. And the more you know, the better you are. The better you are for your clients, the more confident you are. You know, I don't want to work with someone that's going to sell my house that says, well, you know, maybe we could sell it for this, I think. I mean, this is like, I want someone that says, we can put it on the market for this. I'm going to make you multiple offers. This is the way it is. Blah, blah, blah. That's who I want. I'm going to feel like they're going to take better care of me. And when you know more, you're confident, you know, because it's, you know it. You truly know it. There's a difference between knowing it and faking it. Right. And so I, I really want to keep increasing the education level so that everyone at our office knows, knows it and feels good about it. That's wonderful. Those are great goals. Well, Bethany, thank you so much for joining me today. Do you want to direct you. people to how they can find you, how they can work with you? Oh, yeah. I'd, I'd love that. Um, our website is brokawgroup.com, which is B-R-O-K-A-W group, G-R-O-U-P.com. You can find all our information there from phone numbers to emails to the contact me form and all that good stuff. Um, if anyone has any questions about anything, I'd definitely love to talk to you. If any of you are looking for possibly a new place to work or to have anyone come teach you anything as well, I'd be thrilled to be that person. So thank you so much for having me here. I'm very honored and very happy. Oh, thank you, Bethany. And we'll link it all so everybody can find you with just a click. Awesome. Cool. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for listening to the Closing Table podcast brought to you by Windowsill. I'm Kat Schooler. Please make sure you are following or subscribe to our podcast on Apple, Spotify, or YouTube. And if you're enjoying this podcast, please consider leaving us up to a five-star review. It helps us find more amazing listeners like you. Thank you all so much, and we will see you next time.